Hello and welcome to my second Blender Game Engine tutorial. This video is going to cover lighting, such as the use of Blender's various light entities and dynamic shadows. So let's go ahead and start. The first thing we're going to want to do is add a light entity, which can be found under Add, Lamp, and as you can see there are five different types of lights to choose from. For now let's go ahead and add a point light. Now, in Blender, the lights are rendered in real time in the 3D view, and it looks the same in the game engine, which makes editing and creating scenes much, much easier. Additionally, you can switch the uh, light type of light that it is from the lighting menu, which is in the bar on the right and you can switch it just by clicking on the relevant button. Now each type of light has its own specific usefulness. Like point lights are single light sources that project light in all directions and you can change their, the color of the light. You can change how strong that light is where it says energy. You can make it make it so it doesn't affect specularity or doesn't affect diffuse which basically means the light either lights up the scene or it simply adds highlights to objects that it touches. Now sunlights project light in a single uniform direction in infinite space so for sunlights the location of the entity doesn't particularly matter just the direction Spotlights project lights or project light in a, a cone and they only project light in that cone as you can see. Hemi lights are similar to sunlights, however, they also project light behind them. And it's that you can use them to create a pseudo fake AO effect by having a sunlight and a hemi light pointed in the same direction but the hemolite is very weak and you can as you can see I've already done that for this scene and it sort of lights the back of the objects a little bit. Area lights are sort of a combination of point lights and spotlights. They emit light like a point light but only in one direction. They can also be resized into different shapes so they act sort of like a light emitting surface. However, they are currently broken in the current build of Blender, and I'm not sure when they're going to be fixed. It is being worked on, however, and it's pretty exciting. Here's a, here's a screenshot of what they'll eventually be able to do. Now, for dynamic lights, there are two kinds of lights that support that currently. Uh, spotlights and sunlights. I'll start with the spotlight. So go ahead and turn that on. And I'm going to go ahead and delete the hemi light to make the effect easier to see. So to enable shadow, all you have to do is simply hit the shadow checkbox under properties. There we go. As you can see, it projects a dynamic shadow on the object. And the shadow shape is based on the location of the projecting lamp. So if you have it low, it projects it far. If you have it high, it shortens. Also, this is a common issue, and you can usually fix that by chain increasing the clip start, moving it forward slightly. Now. Sunlights, on the other hand, instead of the uh, shadow being based on the location, sunlights project a shadow that is uniform in shape. Enable shadow with the little check mark. As you can see, it creates a square shadow. Let's make this bigger. that is not affected by where 
the sunlight is. So this is how like an actual sun would cast light. It is uh, still defined, to limited to a square based on where the thing is, and that's to save memory. So you kind of have to be careful with sunlights. You can change that by changing the frustrum size. However, that will lower the quality, which of course you can increase the quality by increasing the size of the shadow map, but that can get expensive on system resources very quickly. Using Blender's lighting system, you can set up very complicated scenes. The best way to learn is to experiment with various setups to find what works. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.